If they don't give you a seat at the table, bring a folding chair. These words and others mark the story of black women for ages. And they also foreshadow the hollow victory in celebrating the 100th anniversary passing of the 19th Amendment giving women the right to vote. You see, while it was for women, unfortunately what it meant was white women. From 1920 to 1965, that's what women's political empowerment looked like. So we will speak our, our truth. truth. Black women like Sojourner Truth, Mary McLeod Bethune, Ida B. Wells, Mary Church Terrell, and all the founding members of the then recently organized Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated fought two battles. One for their gender and another for their race within that gender. When the call was sounded to protest the newly elected President Woodrow Wilson's inauguration by suffragists like Susan B. Anthony and Elizabeth Cady Stanton, it was done with the face of hurtful discrimination practices among the suffragists themselves. Journalist and anti-lynching crusader Ida B. Wells said of leading suffragist Frances Willard that she unhesitantly slandered the entire Negro race in order to gain favor with those who are hanging, shooting, and burning Negroes alive. And while she wasn't the only one, using black lives as bargaining chips and fighting over who is more included or who is more excluded, <laughs> I've seen this movie before. Last week, really. Yet African-American club women kept on keeping on. Those of our past saw the vote as part of a much broader range of social, economic, and political issues surrounding their communities. But hey, black women were intersectional before your little think pieces made it cool. Someone we might have called Miss Anne a hundred years ago could be the Karen of today. But we digress. Shortly after 1965, Fannie Lou Hamer and Shirley Chisholm and Flo Kennedy immediately started showing us the way. But it would still be another 10 years in 1975 before most Latinx, Native, and Asian American women could vote. And that right to vote meant that these women would become the leaders themselves as mayors, senators, speakers of state assemblies, and members of Congress. And so we march on, not apart, but together. Not with petticoats, but in pantsuits. And braids, and locks, and sneakers, and crocs. And from our homes and our phone, online, it was black women. Alicia Garza, Patrice Cullors, and Opal Tometi, who helped us turn the words Black Lives Matter from a hashtag to a movement. As Mary Church Terrell said in 1904, I should answer unhesitatingly, it is a magnificent work our women are doing to regenerate and uplift the race. We celebrate the 19th Amendment's passage while we continue to fight for its promise. <laughs>